Having heard of several nuggets, some of them of considerable size, that have lately been found in the Whipstick, a distance of about 15 miles from Bendigo, as correspondent for the Melbourne Argus, I determined to observe from personal observation what was going on in this gold-digging land of mystery. We descended the hill and plunged into the bush. Here onward we went over a flat and upper range, down into the valley below and up the opposite range, and so on mile after mile. Everywhere was quartz, quartz in the ranges making them snow white and constantly cropping out in large masses. Look which way you like, tread which way you please, everywhere you encountered quartz. In the present unsettled state of the diggings, it is the utmost importance that proper information should be given to the public respecting the diggings, more especially new rushes. And having come here with a mob of 14 and sunk holes in every part and rambled for miles through the scrub, I have no hesitation in saying that is a complete shicer. As to the wand of water so much talked about, I cannot see it, for there are no piles of washed dirt stacked as I expected to see. In fact, there is none worth stacking. And it is a crying shame for interested parties to spread reports to delay the hard-working digger to leave where he can probably make tucker. When Victoria was pronounced a colony in 1850, Bendigo was still a sheep run, with just a couple of shepherd's huts along the creek down in the valley. Now despite shepherds and various visitors from nearby homesteads making use of that creek for around 10 years, it wasn't until spring 1851 that gold was officially discovered. By the end of that year there were around 700 diggers working the creek, and 1852 brought around 15,000 diggers and their families to find their fortune on Bendigo and nearby Eagle Hawk. It was pretty well all alluvial or shallow gold they were seeking, and the diggers needed plenty of water for their pans and cradles, and of course to quench their thirst. In 1852, Victoria was in drought, so nobody was too keen to venture far from the creeks. This kept the diggers out of the whipstick. With no sign of water, of course no guarantees of finding gold, it was safer to stick to the gullies of Bendigo and Eagle Hawk for now. That didn't stop a few more adventurous types though trying their luck on the periphery of the whipstick, including here on Whitehorse Gully, the site of some pretty impressive finds in 1852. There were some large nuggets found here, including one they called the Dascom, a whopping chunk of gold weighing 10 kilo. Another nugget called the Victorian was found by a young bloke from Kilmore who apparently fainted at the sight of it. The story goes he was taken to the Gold Commissioner's tent to recover and on returning to his hole the next day found it cleaned out by a candle fossicker, one of those unscrupulous buggers who clean out other people's mine shafts while they sleep. Apparently he lost his marbles a second time and spent the rest of his days riding around on a horse telling anyone who would listen, I'm the bloody wretch who found the nugget. I jump ship. I've hobbled town Cause it was not sailing this way To fields of gold Where dreams come true Nothing would give Here on Lightning Hill, way. just above Whitehorse Gully, diggers must have looked out over the whipstick and wondered if hidden beneath its dense scrub and iron bark forest there wasn't another rich gold field like Bendigo or Eagle Hawk. So buy me a drink, boys And I'll tell you my tale Of iron bars 